here we go. Today, I'm going to be painting up a couple of these head sculpts that I did. And we're going to go through some of the process that I use. Um, it's difficult to everybody that paints has their own method of doing things and uh, I'm no different with that and I'm going to start with uh, trying to match the colors that I want we're going to talk about some of the paint that I use uh, some of the different brush brushes and selections of brushes <clears throat> that I will often use. Um, and go from there. Okay, so the first thing uh, we'll talk about is the, um, the style, the type of paint. I've been using these uh, Vallejo uh, paints for about a year now, maybe two. And... Um, I'm very happy with them. I was using uh, Tamiya paints, but I noticed that um, the the jars that I was using uh, tended to not seal very tight. Uh, before that, I was using uh, Model Master. Um, I found these guys to, to work really well. I like the finish, and I like the... Um, uh, <clears throat> the the look of them when they're done. Okay. Uh, now, there. That being said, uh, I think there is a time and a place for every kind of paint. Like you can get the really cheap, uh, crappy kind of paint from Walmart and uh, Michaels at the little craft stores. They're very cheap, and they usually look pretty chalky. However, uh, I've noticed that sometimes you may want a paint that looks kind of, kind of chalky. Um, and <clears throat> if you're doing some kind of a background, uh, like uh, a, what I'm looking for, like a, uh, the diorama display base or something like that where you want it to look sort of a little dusty or something like that i find those paints work really well um for the head sculpts that i'm going to be doing like i said i prefer these galeo paints now this head sculpt here is going to be um my friend fred okay and fred is a black man and it's interesting when you're, um, hello, Sherry. Thanks for joining me. Um, when you're painting, uh, there's not much of a variety in terms of the skin tones that you get on bodies to put in. So um, sometimes you might want to actually paint, make enough of your paint so that you are, um, have enough to, to go over some of the exposed parts of the body, maybe the hands or the, uh, the neck area. <clears throat> uh, sometimes when I'm doing this for a client, what I'll do is ask them, I'll show them pictures of here's the body you have, we have to work with. Um, now, and a lot of this too is, uh, for example, this here, this is not exactly what you would refer to as like a pale Caucasian type body. Uh, when you buy one and it has, uh, it's described as like, you know, an African tone, it's this like rich chocolate brown color, which is not uh, terribly accurate as far as like a realistic skin tone for most people, especially in America. So anyway, <clears throat> when you're working with uh, a customer, you want to make sure that you're 
uh, you're matching the skin tone uh, of the body uh, compared to um, the the expectation of what they're going to do with it. So, in other words, I could I can match this to look like the person, or I could match it to look like the body, or I could try and paint the head and the body so they both match. Okay, which is somewhat challenging. Uh, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to try and match the paint on the head to the actual person that I know. <clears throat> so I find that's that's usually uh, the win. Now, the first thing I like to do is start off with uh, the, the areas that are going to be deepest. So uh, in, this ter in terms of layers. Okay, so what I mean is, see, the eye sits deepest. So what I'll do is I'll start off with uh, painting the, the whites of the eye. <clears throat> this way, if I get any of the white on the eyelid, when I paint uh, the, um, uh, the skin tone, I can take a thin brush and I can work it in there and not worry about, um, it, it will be easier to not hit the eye than it is to not hit the eyelid when you're painting the eye, if that makes any sense. <clears throat> the next thing I'll do is to paint the lips. Because again, it's, it's a lot easier to, to get in there and, uh, paint this while you're not, you don't have to worry about the, the rest of the skin tone. Okay. So what I'm going to use for the eye is this, uh, off white. Now I like these guys because you can just squeeze them into your little palette cup. You don't have to worry about wasting a lot of money. These things usually cost about $3.50 each. So you really don't want to waste much if you can help it. Because it adds up after a while. Okay, let's see here. We go here. So around here, <clears throat> pop the base off there. I like these paints because you really don't have to water them down too much. Sometimes you'll get a paint and it's so thick that. It just doesn't really work well out of the bottle, which most of them are. But I found that these are pretty, uh, <clears throat> pretty consistent. <clears throat> okay. I usually do two coats anyway. Now I'm doing two versions of the same head <clears throat> this way if one comes out better than the other i will send the customer to, with well in this case my subject the uh, the better head let me try to get in here and put this in mistake that I used to make was to just use white and it just comes out way too bright. It doesn't look natural. <clears throat> if you look at most people's eyes, they are really not white. Okay. This this is a um, uh, Master's Touch Fine Art Studio. It's a, it's a very fine detail brush that I like using, especially for uh, for such small detail. <clears throat> so that works pretty well. Um, now for the lips. Okay, so uh, when you're looking at um, 
<clears throat> the lips. It's sort of a, um, it's dicey. Okay. So what I'm going to use is this brown rose and it will probably come out a little bit too pink looking, but I can adjust it later. Uh, cause what I'm going to end up doing is, is putting uh, a base coat down and I'll be adding a little bit of, uh, subtle shading to it anyway. Painting is my probably my least favorite of uh, the head sculpt process because I really start to notice the mistakes I made in the in the sculpture itself. Like, like how did I miss that? <laughs> of course, most people aren't going to look at these things. Like right now, I'm wearing a, uh, a nice. Um, magnifying headset that helps me to see what I'll end up doing is putting you know, a little bit of shading and some of the lip. I have a, a friend of mine who's actually a professional painter. Um, we were on the same YouTube forum for a long time. Now, also, what I'm going to be doing with this <clears throat> is I'm going to take a little tiny bit of this here, and I'm going to sort of touch into the corners of the eye. Again, I really don't care that I'm hitting the eyelid so much. Because I said it's going to be covered with a flesh tone anyway. The hard part about this is to not to make sure that you don't get too much on there. You want it to be very, very subtle. And this one here, I had to touch up the, uh, when I made my mold, I should have put in some venting. for air bubbles inside the uh, inside the mold so when I made the casting <clears throat> I wouldn't get uh, air trapped in some of these places even though I used a pressure tank with it oops there's one a little too far in there so I'm gonna have to touch that up with the white so the ear didn't cast all the way the way I wanted it to. So I had to fill it in with some uh, basically a, a correcting resin. Milliput that I used to, um, to kind of build it back up again. That's good. Okay, now, for the skin tone, I have to find my little plastic sleevey thing. Brushes are expensive, so you try to get as much mileage as you can out of the brush. So, I like to take my little sleeve here and keep it over top of the bristles as long as I can. <coughs> Excuse me. Um... Okay. Now, for the skin tone itself, I found this uh, um, 
web page uh, on a forum and um, cool mini or not. And there's this thing on there about uh, using these specific, uh, this specific paint brand to make an appropriate skin tone for, <clears throat> for your model. And it comes with all different ethnicities. It comes from, it goes from a uh, African, Australian, Aborigine, African American, Arabian, Indian, Southeast Asian, Chinese, Mongolian, Japanese, Pacific Islander, Native American, Latin American, Irish, Mediterranean, Scandinavian, Romanian, albino. Um, yeah, so, and it gives you a, uh, a formula that you can follow um, to match the, the color that you want. Okay, now, so with this one, it recommends a flat brown. Now, what I've found is that quite often when I use this formula, I'm not necessarily thrilled with the um, the result. It, I mean, it's, and I think a lot of it may have to do with the fact <clears throat> that maybe some of these things that are being painted um, aren't necessarily in the scale of a, um, of a six scale head, which can throw off the way things look. Um, I'm having trouble finding my flat brown. Hmm. Okay. Which is okay. Can make do. Saddle brown. Umber, mahogany. Hmm. Oh dear, I'm at a flat brown. Okay, I'll have to go on with this. Okay, so they recommend tan earth, which is this guy here. Um. What else? What else? Tan earth, orange brown, cork brown, and basic skin tone. Okay. Now, I don't have <clears throat> the flat brown, so I'm going to have to use... This says to use mahogany brown. Now, my friend here is not particularly dark-skinned, so I'm going to modify this a little bit. I think what I'm going to do is... Um, uh, I'm going to use a cork brown. Either me or my daughter didn't clean up this cup terribly well. It's probably me. <laughs> it's funny, no matter how many of these I buy, you can... Pick them up really cheap at the dollar store. And but no matter how many I buy, I always seem to get to a spot where I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I, uh, I don't have an, enough. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a majority of cork brown on this. <clears throat> and uh, another thing I'll do is when I'm making this, I'll, I'll go on uh, a, an editing program and I will take a uh, sample, like the eyedropper sample of uh, the skin tone and see where it falls on the spectrum according to the, the program.
Now I'm going to compare this tone with my photo resources here. And this is actually a little bit dark. So I'm going to add just a little bit of white. What I like to do is um, when I'm buying my paint, I usually buy several of the things I use most most frequently. That way I don't have to worry about running out so much. Now I'm hoping that I'm making enough here to get a base coat done on both heads. Okay, looks like I a little too much white, but maybe not. Okay, not bad, but I think I'm going to add a little bit more of this tan earth. Like that. <clears throat> of course, the hard part about this is like when you when you do this. You'll never be able to match the color exactly the same way again. So you want to try and get it as close as you can the first time. Okay, now <clears throat> this is my base tone that I'm going to start with. Uh, there'll be other other tones that I do that will go on top of this. But I'm going to start here. <clears throat> what I'm going to work on first is going around the eyes. So I can leave a little hint of that pink that I put on there. Just a little bit. So I should probably put this on here, make sure I'm actually covering with my camera. Okay best I can. So what I'm trying to do is get around here in all the little you know, nooks and crannies that we have around the eye with the folds of the eyelid. <clears throat> so as I use a larger brush, I don't have to worry about accidentally hitting those other areas that I did before. Plus, the under eye area tends to be a little bit more in shadow a little bit, you know, since there's usually less fat in the face around the, uh, the eye socket. It tends to be a little bit darker and a little bit more influenced by the blood vessels in the eye. Also going to do this while I'm working on it and get around the lips. Again, for the same reason in that when I do this, I want to use a larger brush to put on the rest of the skin tone. And that can get a little sloppy. Get into these little, little spaces, little shadows, the creases in the skin. There we 
There we go. It's kind of creepy, kind of you know, zombie like. <laughs> Hey, Deef, how are you? Your ice cream and margarine bucket lives for Color Palace most of the time. <clears throat> it's, it's funny. Uh, years ago, um, I found that back before you know, there were there were actual art stores that you had to go to, and they could be pretty expensive. So I would use uh, all kinds of different things for for my paint palettes. Um, very rarely did I actually use a an actual paint palette. Be pieces of wood or um, covered in aluminum foil or plastic wrap. Nowadays, you can go to the dollar store, or you, I mean, you could spend seven or eight dollars on a, a plastic paint palette and at Michael's or uh, Hobby Lobby, or you can go and just pick one up at the dollar store, which is the same thing for well, it used to be a dollar store, now it's a dollar twenty five store. which is, of course, made of petroleum products. Plastics makes, make our life so much easier. Okay. Now, painting is something that I found is um, tricky if you look too much into the detail. You can very easily make this into something that's going to be <clears throat> very hard to see um, detail with, like, uh, or add too much detail, rather, and then uh, make your subject look older. Like Fred, who's just a little bit younger than me, has requested, yeah, don't make my beard gray like it really is. <laughs> I'm like, but why? It's not completely white like mine is. Well, or mostly completely white. But, as we say, we want, we want our subject or our recipient to enjoy, enjoy their figure. So you want to make it as pleasing to them as possible. Okay. There's two. It's a little Uncle Fester-ish. Sorry, Fred, if you're watching. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, larger brush. Okay. Now, because Fred here is bald. What I want is, I want to be able to use a thicker brush to do longer, more consistent brush strokes through the head. I'll do this real quick on the nose. It's a little on the nose, but um, bum. Thank you, thank you. I'll be here all week. Okay. I'm going to have to get myself a new 
slightly angled brush here. This is a little streaky. Bristles aren't as soft as I'd like. And this is one of my cheapy ones. I grabbed the wrong brush. It'll work. You get a brush that has some nice soft bristles to it. <clears throat> I find it <clears throat> it's much less streaky than a brush that has more firm bristles in it. Let's see what I got here. Oh dear. Oh dear. I can't seem to find my other brush. Okay. So I'm going to use this guy. Whoops. Not too bad. Okay. i go here. Walk my way in here around the ear. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to do a little bit of editing here with my X-Acto knife because I don't like the way that ear came out. I find it very difficult when you're sculpting <coughs> to get the... Um, the features in a bald head correct. Ultimately, you find that like there's spots in there that just didn't quite smooth out the way you wanted. Plus, I also had to put the pore spout in the back of the head here. There's another issue. Pop that in the water for a second. I'm going to grab this exacto knife. Hey, El Cardinal Sin. Yeah, isopropyl is my is so so handy and so many different parts of customizing like when you're <clears throat> excuse me when you're working with uh sculpey the isopropyl alcohol really thins out the clay very nicely here this is also one of the hazards when you're dealing with a very bright light is to make sure that you don't cast a shadow on things and then miss a spot. So you really got to spin the head around a lot to make sure you're getting your paint into all those little recesses. Of course, another factor is too that the paint is often a different shade when it dries. Now, <clears throat> because my friend here doesn't have a very thick beard the skin tone will show through a bit and you have to think about that as your um, it's this thing about accuracy and effect 
because if you go completely accurate and you were to sit there, you're really not going to paint every single strand of hair with your brush because that would be insane. I'm sure somebody does it, but um, it'll probably make my head explode. <clears throat> so when I do this, um, although the hair, each individual strand may look black, if you do that, it's going to really make it look kind of unnatural, sort of like a, like somebody's wearing like a, a wig or with a cat's laid across your face. And we don't want that. So I go with the flesh tone. And work around into the beard. And I'll pretty much dry brush on the uh, the strands of the beard. That way, it gives the effect <coughs> of um, <coughs> seeing through the beard. Hello, Carla Burton. for beverage. Uh, dry brush. Okay. Um, we'll get to the dry brush, Carla. It's, what it is, is you take your brush and you apply a little bit of paint to it and you kind of really brush out the excess so that the, the brush itself is almost like completely dry. And what it does is it allows you to hit the surfaces of things that are sort of raised and highlight them very well. So like in this case, um, uh, it will just cover the, the, the outer edge of the facial hair <clears throat> so when that happens, it um, it makes it look like individual strands of hair instead of um, just a um, like a mess of glob or something. Uh, when I get done doing the head, I'll I'll grab that little diorama base that I had built uh, or I'm, am building, and I'm going to show you how you can put some of the um, the dry brushing effect on there to make it uh, very three-dimensional looking. Again, longer. I had my wider brush, which I don't know where I left it. I'm so absent-minded. Gold. Uh, I would be able to to do like longer individual strokes on this. And oh, there's an air bubble inside the head sculpt. Like that. Now we get a more consistent, less streaky effect <clears throat> on the back of the head. <clears throat> allergy effect going today. I was outside pulling out ragweed today. It seems to have gotten its revenge on me. There we go. So again, this is the base tone of um, the flesh the skin tone that I'm after. And it's going to take a couple a couple little passes on this stuff to, to make it where I want it. So it's going to take several coats. Now each subsequent subsequent blah, 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 
I can talk. I really can. Uh, each subsequent coat of paint will actually be thinner and have different tones to it. So you want, you actually want this stuff to, um, uh, to be layered in. So when the, the light hits it, the light actually penetrates into the different layers of paint, which gives it a very realistic looking effect in theory. You know, it depends on the, the artist painting. And I said, painting is not my strongest point in the whole process, but <clears throat> I'm okay. No, Cardinal Sin, this is my friend Fred. Um, if I knew how to do a, like a, um, uh, show my screen on this thing, which I don't know how to do, um, it would definitely show up with, uh, I could show you like a Fred's actual face and you can see how, as it's starting to dry, it's getting that streaky look to it. And this is even at, after putting in a little bit of uh, <clears throat> of dye into the resin when I cast it. So I'm definitely going to have to work this a little bit so I don't get that, that streaky appearance inside it. Yeah, as far as like the layers of paint go, now Fred sort of has a um, uh, some like a freckling effect on on his skin. So what I'll end up doing is putting in that freckling effect with a burnt umber, and then when I paint over it with a lighter shade and a more watered down uh, tone those little freckles will still be there, but they'll be more subdued. So it'll be, uh, it'll be less noticeable and less shocking to the eye. Okay. This is what I mean about like the bright light kind of hid some spots there where I had missed with the paint. So now that as this is drying, this is actually looking a little bit, the skin tone is actually a little too dark to be accurate. Um, yeah, you can put, you can do a stipple effect. Um, uh, but when you look at someone and they have, like, for example, when I did Mexican Iron Man's uh, head sculpt, he has some very distinct, um, I don't know whether you would call them freckles, spots, whatever, uh, on, his, on his face. And it's, it's the kind of thing that we usually don't notice very much. Uh, until you um, you put it in, and then all of a sudden it's very uh, very apparent that like oh yeah that that helps me recognize so and so. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I'm taking some of my brown rose, but I'm mixing in a little bit of burnt umber into it. So I can create a shadow effect for the lips. Um, yeah, like uh, toothprint, yeah, toothpicks go like that. I like to use my little tiny brush here. <clears throat> I find that it does uh, does as much. Although I do like to use the um, uh, the stylus to put in. The um, 
the pupil in the eye because it really gives me a, uh, a pretty accurate um, pretty accurate spot. Okay, now, so what I'm going to do is take a little of this and sort of put in the line. You know what? That doesn't quite look dark enough. I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a little bit of black. Just a tiny, tiny bit. And now, a touch of tenderness. Oops, too much. Anybody get that one? Milton the monster. He's Milton, my brand new son. Okay. Put a little bit of shadow on the bottom lip here. So, and this is going to be a little bit darker. Do some lines. Lip there. So. And again, this is for the effect that uh, <clears throat> um, when I do this, it's keeping in mind that the uh, the figure is meant to be sort of looked at on display. Um, she can do certain things with it, but uh, if you pick things up and you look at them really, really close, they will have a very different look than they will as if you were just like looking at it. Uh, on a shelf. On a shelf, it should look more natural. It should look a little bit more um, the freckle fader. Lady sent me home saying, no, freckles give me character. Yes. <clears throat> uh, it's funny because when you first start painting, or when I first started painting, and some of the advice that I got from professionals was that um, in fact, like, part of the uh, this process, like, as I sculpted this, I actually put in texture into the sculpt itself. So I don't want to go too deep uh, and, and lose that, uh, that texture with too thick of a paint. Okay. White, and a little bit more cork brown. I want this tone to be a little bit lighter than the last one. find a decent fatter brush this one might work it just might work That's smoothed out there. Now I'm going to take a little bit more of this guy. The things like freckles and um, uh, 
spots, moles, little things like that really tend to um, makes, make a uh, figure actually look like what it is that you're, you're trying for. Adding a little tiny bit of red into here because that's where you start to get like your um, blood vessels that kind of show through a little bit. Okay. Giving the face a little bit more of a, uh, a reddish tone. There we go. That's better. Do nice, smooth strokes with the brush. That will reduce the number of air bubbles you get in your paint. Which most of the time will dry pretty well. But what you can avoid, you should avoid. I get done this, I'll have to check with, um, <clears throat> with my friend Fred to see if he would mind putting up a, uh, a comparison shot with his actual face compared to my sculpture. Did that before without thinking. It was like, you know, it's kind of rude to you know, just slap somebody's face on the internet without them knowing. <laughs> we just kind of take for granted that so many people out there have like social media and, and things and are just out there. I never really thought too much about it myself. They're like, oh, here I am. Okay. And get some crumbs and stuff there. Okay. There we go. My daughter there. Okay, now I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is see if I can't take this smaller brush and work out a couple of these little air bubbles that I see. Pull the paint around a little bit. A little thicker than I wanted to, but should be okay. It's 
it's a little humid today so i guess that's why my uh <clears throat> my thinning didn't quite work out the way i wanted it to Okay, let's see here. All right, got that going in there. All right, hopefully when this dries, it will look look a little less streaky. <clears throat> okay, so while I'm waiting for this to dry a little bit, what I think I'm going to do is um, take a little bit of this uh, mahogany brown going to mix this in with the um, the brown rose just to sort of mute it a little bit and I'm going to thin it <clears throat> so I can get a more consistent tone on the lip. However, I want to I want to make a wash over the lips. And that will sort of incorporate in the shadow and the shading in the lips, but then also <clears throat> make it a little bit more so the shadow is still there <clears throat> but it's a little less drastic Okay. All right, so that's, while that's drying there, I think what I'll probably start doing is work on the eyes. This is where I get impatient. I usually have my uh, um, hair dryer with me so I can kind of hit this thing a little bit and um, start working on the next layers. And I can probably start putting in some of those freckles that I talked about. Okay, let's see here. Get some clearer shots. Okay, so. Um, I think I'll use this mahogany brown <clears throat> for the uh, for the spots we're talking about. Okay, so I want my sharpest brush. And I'm going to go like one right in the side of his nose, like that. Okay. Got a couple by the eye. Pardon me just a second. I have to go let my dog out because she's got to be a nudge.
Okay, I'm back. I'll let the dog out. Okay. Let's see now. Okay. Back to spotting. So I might as well do this on both while I'm at it. <clears throat> okay. Side of the nose. Two by the eye. Uh, let's see, over here we have one here, one here, and hmm, okay, that's interesting. Okay, here we go. This is much more pronounced here. Okay, so I got one here. Okay, I have one, two, three. Here. <clears throat> see how about the nose? Yeah, definitely. Okay. It's interesting. It's sort of like a little roadmap on somebody's face. notice until you really start to notice. <laughs> okay. One right. There. Okay. So that's the first one down. this side so pronounce one here like that okay we have these three here one, two three This one here. One there. This is a nice part about taking so many reference pictures. Because <clears throat> you have you actually have something to work with. Okay. 
Okay. All right, that'll do it for that. Okay, now while that's drying, <clears throat> and start doing the pupils. Okay, dried a little bit, a little more burnt umber here. friend Nathan who uh, gave me a lot of pointers for painting he's talking about the process of doing the eyes and it's this guy is astonishing like he'll take a six scale head and he can paint all of the little lines inside the irises and have them look completely natural it's uh it's actually a little frightening bed. Okay. Yeah, this is a um, uh, lot of <laughs> a lot of fine detail work. Um, there are uh, places that sell decals that you can put eyes in, um, but of course, to me that would just be a sort of like an extra um, uh, an extra step. Okay, let's see here. All right now. Here. There we go. Okay, once I put the uh, eyebrows in, should even look even stronger of a resemblance. Okay. Let me mix my wash tone again here. A little bit thinner again.
I have a little squeezy bottle full of water somewhere, but I didn't remember to bring that down here with me, so I'll have to, uh, have to wing it. Okay, here we go again. What I like to do is take my brush and make make a circle with it. Okay. Here. right there one second time to rescue the dog so let's come back inside now because it's hot out Coming in was a little bit quicker than going out for her. Billy dog. Okay. Need to go a little bit more on this side. Okay. Here, Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here's right here. It's funny, it looks so much different in person. <laughs> okay, let me try this again. Trying to make a little bit more of a wash here. Now, my intention with this, I'm going to mix up a little bit of uh, <clears throat> a different tone. Same basic feel. So I got the tan earth, cork brown. Light brown. Where'd you go? Blowing me. Yeah. 
Just we're using your yeah. like that. Crikey. Okay. Some white. Let's mix this up a little bit. See how it looks. And it's quite dark in comparison. So we're going to have to lighten this up. I think we'll do a little off white. Did not need anywhere near this much, but oh well. Okay, so now I want to put in um, a little of this very red cavalry brown. So it gets sort of like a, it's the skin tone, but it's going to be more of a blush. this okay now now as I really thin this out so it becomes a wash and a wash is like you have you know different terminology in painting so a wash is a very thin layer of paint very thin coat of paint that will add some tone to something, but won't overpower it. It won't like, be really that pronounced. <clears throat> what I did was I took these two and put them together. So I'll take the, the wash and what you do with this is you kind of like touch up like the nose and the cheeks. Places on the face that tend to be a little bit more. Look at that, that sort of blush effect. And not a whole lot of paint on the brush. take my my wash of the basic skin tone and sort of brush over that and that blends it in a bit around the face area and kind of feather it a little bit and that will soften those that blush tone in so you don't have such a, a drastic line And the, the wash is thin enough so that, that that blush tone will show through, but yet not really be overpowering. Okay, now, take my big brush again. And I'm going to do another, another coat of this over the back of the head. 
get some good coverage. We'll do like one or two of them. And of course, the last thing that we'll put on is the hair, the eyebrows, the mustache, the beard. <clears throat> this kind of dry a little bit. Again, is the times where I wish I had my hair dryer down here. Just give us a little blast of uh, um, well, while I'm doing that, I can. <clears throat> While I'm waiting for that, what I can do is a little bit of the color change inside the eye. Okay, now, when you're looking at the eye, you want it to have a little bit of a um, uh, that's the word I'm looking for, a suggested tone to it, okay? So what I'll do is I'll take a little of this light brown. Um, and I want to take a look at my options here. So I have the saddle brown. Let's see which contrast. Oh, you know what? I think I'll do the saddle brown. Okay, I think it'll it contrasts nicely to the um, uh, the burnt umber. You see right here. The camera is having a little bit of trouble uh, differentiating between these two, but um, I think it's light enough. So to do is you take this and right in the top of the eye, put a little bit of a brush stroke. I don't know if that's picking that up. Let's see it like that. <clears throat> yeah. This one thing about this paint, it does take a while to dry. It'll it'll be sitting for a while. Um, and give you that that look. Okay, here's where we come in with our stylus. Let's see which was this is the smaller one here. <clears throat> okay. Dip that in my black. Terribly happy with that, but I think it'll work. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is <clears throat> so I'm going to cheat a little bit here. Just because I'm feeling a bit insecure, 
got my likeness here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the eyebrows. Now, I'm going to take some of this burnt umber and black. Brush is starting to separate. That's never a good thing. It means it's time for a new brush. tend to get quiet when I'm doing all this detail work. One thing you don't want is to make those mistakes there. It's a real pain to go back and try and clean everything up around there. Okay. All right, now. Now we're going to try and do this. Okay, so here's an example of your dry brushing. I got the brush very, very dry. And just lightly pulled across the raised texture of the mustache. You can see it kind of highlights the, the lines and make it look more like hair, more so than just... A blob of paint sprayed across the surface there. And Fred is my brother. We've been training together for almost 40 years. He's at my house for anywhere between Tuesday nights for probably about four to five hours. We'll hang out. Well, maybe not. Like Probably more like three to four hours. Um, we work out, do a little sparring, do a little, a lot of, a lot of BSing. Yeah. Okay. 
here. I think I'm going to need a little bit more paint. I think I'm ready for another adventure. Tonight, my son and I are planning on watching Fellowship of the Ring because it's been probably about three months since we've done that. Is a good example of the dry brushing technique. You just kind of pull it across over the surface of the beard, and it just catches the outer layers. Okay. All right. Oh, I forgot something. I definitely forgot something. Better do the earrings. I used to have an earring many, many, many years ago. Then we were in class one day, and um, I see if it was demonstrating a, uh, a head throw technique, and his wedding ring met my earring. My earring lost. Got caught on there and like tore. <laughs> Not enough to like, you know, rip through my ear. Well, tore it enough that I could just pop out the whole stud without having to take off the back. It was uh, <laughs> a little, little uncomfortable. <clears throat> okay, so I guess the question is, um, what color should I make the earring? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this brass instead of um, gold a little bit more subdued you know what I'm gonna let that dry a little bit before I do that or else it will okay, okay. Okay, how does that look? It's kind of hard to see in this. I don't like tone in the lip. It's 
still a little too severe. We're going to mute that a little bit. Is it just a little too sharp? Thank you, Cardinal Sin. That's uh, definitely what I'm shooting for. What I hope to do is like I, <clears throat> when I'd done this um, uh, before for my my nieces and my nephews, I had each of them pose with the action figure that I did of them. And uh, you don't have Fred do that. Now, once this dries, um, it will definitely get the color change will the color tone will change a little bit and what you have to do is um, spray it with a um, a sealant and I use this uh, testers dull coat well testers I believe has been bought by Krylon now either Krylon or uh, Rust-Oleum, one or the other. And um, it's called Dull Coat. And what it does, it gives it a, a matte finish. And then after that's done, you take a, <clears throat> a varnish and you paint over the eyes to give it a gloss. Then you mix that varnish with a little bit of water to tone it down a little bit. And then you hit the, the surface of the lips with it to give it more of a, uh, a moist approach. And once, once I get this um, <clears throat> mounted on the body, you'll be able to see just like just how, how it looks. Okay, well, I think that's it. Um, I think we're going to wrap up here. Um, thank you, everyone, who stayed around and watched me uh, blabber and work through this. I will put some some pictures up, like uh, after it's dried and and sealed, <clears throat> to be able to see the the big difference in the in this uh, in the paint texture and stuff. Uh, then I'll put it on the actual figure body and show you how it looks there. Well, okay. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you watching and see you next time.